Well, hello there, my dear audience, and welcome back into another The Owl House video, and the continuation of the ongoing mystery behind the secret symbols within the show. And before I may forget later on in this video, let's start off with that as a matter of fact. Quite a few of you managed to find even more codes in different episodes, including this very same one, which is impressive. And of course, here are the names of these amazing finders. And I suppose, just as I suspected in my theory video, this may be a reoccurring theme within the show in each episode, or each even just this season. I even put the theory into the test by finding the other two codes myself within the episodes I Was a Teenage Abomination and The Intruder. So now that I've gotten that crucial part of the analysis video out of the way, I believe you've all waited long enough. Let's begin. The episode begins with Ida having a card game battle by the name of Hexus Hold'em with her Staff Owl, and the game seems mighty similar to Yu-Gi-Oh, with the cards and its characters literally coming to life and inflicting lifelike damage. But during the game, Ida's curse once again becomes an issue, and soon she heads out in order to purchase more elixir to cure it, since her stash was empty. However, once they finally make it to Ida's usual stand, she has to meet another person at a night market by the name of Grimhammer III, aka Tibbles. Someone who, in my opinion, was awfully mysterious, and I just have this gut feeling that we're gonna see him again sometime soon. Cause as it turns out, not only was he a discount Gideon gleeful with his small body trickster personality and weird demands, but though he was supposed to be the one who helps Ida buy her elixir, he's also the same person who cons her by playing Hexus Hold'em. And also, he discovered at first glance that Ida was the owl lady wanted by the covens for a ton of money, so not only does he win King as his new dress-up chum, just because I have a model's body doesn't mean you can use me like this! But Tibbles manages to also capture Ida due to the fact that Ida's magic is no longer able to work once the curse unleashes. Now this is when things really get interesting because not only we know her magic can't be used while the curse is active, but we have another question. Were her powers being cut off intentional as part of the curse? And if it was, this makes me believe that even more, the Covens were responsible for the misfortune. Because if the Covens purposely take the students' powers away from them once they join a coven, I doubt that they were okay with Ida keeping hers and becoming one of the most powerful witches in the Boiling Isles, which in their eyes was unacceptable, and so as for treason against their beliefs, they punished her for possessing such strengths. But uh, that's just a theory. Now that I've already covered most of Ida's part of the story, we gotta discuss about Luce and the gang as well. Before Ida heads out for her elixir, Luce secretly invites Gus and Willow over the Owl House in order for them to commence a conjuring. And since you need at least three participants for the trick, it was perfect. And apparently it can be done using the celestial powers of the moonlight each year. And seriously, what's up with witches and anything to do with the moon? Traditionally, you're meant to basically have a sleepover and recite an enchantment that animates the object within the circle. Now, before I move on, I just gotta say I really tried decoding this flyer because the phrase looks like two words and all of the lettering seems separate from one another. And for anyone who was curious, nah, it's not like any of the letterings from Gravity Falls, but great guess if you were thinking that, because I tried myself and no. It, it, no, it didn't work. Now, two major details about this scene is Gus's interesting bucket list and this magic scroll that gives you the ability to possess online social media statuses like Pinstagram. <clears throat> Instagram. And I guess I was right about Amity being somewhat like Pacifica Northwest. Now all we need is for a reveal of her parents being a bunch of washed up penny pinching richaholics. And honestly, just coming from the look of Amity's house already, my point is practically nearly already proven. Another weird feature they have in the Boiling Isles is much like what they had to do during the medieval times, and that's the use of ravens to send certain voice messages. So perhaps they have magic for text messages, but just not voice calling like regular cell phones on Earth. Now don't think I forgot, cause let's take a look at Gus's bucket list. The ones I mainly want to bring to light is him losing his baby fangs, him digging an underground tunnel, and achieving a swamping permit. As for the first one, I'm only guessing that certain witches possess fangs and maybe Ida being cursed wasn't the reasoning behind hers after all. Now digging underneath the Hexide Academy has got to be a hint for a future event in case of an incident or maybe the three of them will soon have their own secret meetup place. The swamping permit could be the world's way of saying a driver's permit, but of course not with an actual car. Maybe swamping could be referring to them boat riding across large waters. Now moving right along, the three amigos make their way inside of the house in order to use one of Gus's 
figurines as the test subject to animate. In the end, however, the object that ends up becoming animated is the entire Owl House building, which may have been because Hootie was in direct contact with the moon. But of course, I do believe that it was still mostly because of the three of them and the help of their powerful magic wielding. And ironically, even though Willow brushes off the fact that it was the power of friendship, but yet believes it was mainly due to the celestial powers of the moonlight, I for one do believe that friendship possibly played a major role in their enormous ability to collectively control an entire building. Within the episode, there's even a clip of multiple people including Amity and Shock after learning about the event. Not to mention King and Ida also surprised. I want you to realize how this scene is set up. For all we know, just by examining Amity's posture and facial expressions, I bet these aren't even her actual friends. And not only is this the very first time we the audience have even seen these group of supposed friends, but even just by looking at the outro, Amity is standing alone with no one. Funny part about this entire ordeal is how Amity apparently used to be friends with Willow when they were younger before Amity gained her own powers. If only Amity hadn't availed on Willow, I bet she maybe would have been able to at least animate a doll during the annual conjuring, which was revealed to be something that even her own friends couldn't accomplish. And as for the magic deriving from the potential of Luz possessing a large portion of magical abilities, I don't think it was due to her. During the sequence when the trio have to recite the enchantment, a small but crucial detail that had happened was how Luz didn't even know the words of the enchantment. Moonlight we call, we sing. Moonlight take this chance. Moonlight can tie the string, and I don't know the words. So how would the casting mainly flow through her, but maybe perhaps I'm just overanalyzing. Only time will tell, I guess. Eventually, the gang becomes so adventurous that they decide to pretty much raid Amity's home in order to show their massive accomplishment. Especially since Willa herself really wanted to prove in Amity's smug face just how powerful of a witch she was. But then what stops them in their tracks is the group of demon hunters who come along and decide to attempt to steal the house after probably seeing it as a monster itself. Or at least they may know of Ida and her special valuables inside. I'm going with the first one. Also, one of the members of the group has some serious issues. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is this really what you want to be doing with your life? Tossing kids from cliffs? Actually, yes. It's been my dream since I was a boy. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they tried to fight back, and they nearly got me, but, you know, I handled it. They were children, Tom. During the children's capture, Luz speaks Spanish, I believe, for the very first time. Three must hold hands! It's the only way! Oye, no me hable así. Will, will you help me out with Hootie? And I tried using captions, and that didn't even help, so I couldn't really translate it. But I tried listening closely, and I think she said, Oh yeah? Take that. Or, oh yeah, you like that? It's once again just another small detail within the episode, but I could not be the only one who was curious about that moment. The kids and even Ida miles away eventually make it out alive once again thanks to the might of Willow and her awesome plant magic and perfect timing. Now of course, when Ida finds out about the whole thing, she gets upset, but, but not too much. If you're gonna eat me, just do it now! Do it now! She only disciplines them by instructing them to clean up, which is the least they could do. And maybe the experience even changed her mind a bit, since she even says that next time she would gladly participate in The Conjuring, when just in the beginning of the episode, she showed no interest in it whatsoever and dismissed it. But hey, I guess you can say that she probably got a slither of the almighty power of... Friendship. So as you may already know, this is the end of the video, and as usual, this has been The Next Big Thing, coming at you with another video. So, without further ado, thank you all for participating, like the video if you haven't, and um, I will see you all in the next one. Peace!